Hey everybody, this is the uh, part one of our new project called Winter Landscape, or what I also, also call it is the Minimal Landscape, because this picture really doesn't contain a whole lot of fantastic colors or details. It's very simplistic in its design, and there's not much that we need to add to it. But I'm splitting it into two parts, just because of the fact that I think that if I were to put this all into one part, it's not going to end well for some of my students. So instead, I feel that for this, in order to get it nice and crisp and sharp, which is something that we're really going to need for this one, is that you are going to want to uh, split this up into two parts so we can focus in on the simpler things on part one and then some of the color and the designs for other items in part two. So I'm going to be showing you guys part one. Things that you're going to need for this, you're going to need a blank piece of paper and make and try to find a piece of paper that is not notebook paper with any lines on it. I know some of you have submitted projects that you did in a notebook, um, which is okay. But for this one, we really want a blank white sheet of paper with nothing on it would be the best. You are going to need a pencil. Um, and then the optional things that I have that you could you could potentially use to darken in your lines because we want these lines black, not gray like a pencil, black. You could use a black colored pencil. Just make sure that you have it sharpened to a nice, fine tip. Uh, crisp, sharp lines are actually going to be very, very, very important for this project. So you're going to want something that comes to a nice, uh, fine point or fine tip for your uh, drawing supplies. And then in the end, you could use the colored pencil or a Sharpie. And it would be best if, if you actually had the ultra fine point. That's the super, super small Sharpie. All right. I have one, except the for some reason, the liquid on the inside has dried out over here. And this end isn't working because the opposite end is your standard Sharpie that we've used many times. So this is a double-ended one. If you have a ultra fine point Sharpie is actually what it's called. I would use this for the last step of what I'm going to show you for part one. If not, you can use just a black colored pencil. I just think that the end of the Sharpie, the regular Sharpie that we'd normally use is just too big. And you don't want anything like that. You want a very fine, crisp line. Nothing too wide. Okay, so here we go for part one. Again, this is minimal, so this part's not going to have many lines on it. So your first job is to find the middle of your paper. You're not drawing anything yet. You're just finding the middle. Now, with this, with this landscape, with it being a wintry, more natural thing, we don't want to use rulers or anything. So everything is going to be drawn freehand. So just do the best that you can. Don't use rulers for guides because we actually do not want straight lines for this. We want slightly curved or wavy lines. So I find the middle. Now, from the middle, I'm going to go down just a little bit. Now this line is going to be my horizon line. All right, this is where the sky and ground are going to meet. So the middles here, I went down just a little bit and I'm not going to draw a nice straight line across. I want this more natural. So I'm going to be drawing a line that's just like slightly wavy, slightly. And I mean slight. Okay, that's all that we need. Here's the ground. Here's the sky. We're going to get to the this area up here because we're going to draw some mountains. And down here, we're going to draw like some hills to make it look like there is some pieces of land that are at different uh, distances away from us. So from here, I'm going to go down just a little bit more and I'm going to draw a slightly curvy line that it does not end straight across from here. It's going to go down just a little bit. And once you see it, you'll figure it out. Okay, nice and easy. Like this, I started higher and I ended just a little bit lower than where it was. And that's the first line. Now I'm going to start on the right side. I'm going to start a little bit under where I finished and go down a little bit further here. Again, I want slightly bumpy. I want to keep it more natural. So now the third line I'm going to draw for this for the land over here is not actually going to start underneath this. I'm going to go up just a little bit on that line I just drew. And from here, I'm going to connect the line here over like that. So now it actually looks like I have this very close chunk of land and then over a little hill, there's this one. And then over a little here, hill, there's this one. And then this one's far away. And then this is the, that's where the ground ends and the sky starts, except we're going to be drawing some mountains. 
So with my mountains, one thing we want to stay away from is those elementary, very pointy mountains. Mountains are not like that. They have kind of rounded lines like this, some bumpy lines. And when you get to the peak, you do want it slightly curved up at the top. You want something like, kind of like more soft than a pointy jagged edge to it. So when I start my mountains, I'm not going to start right here. I'm going to go up a little bit and imagine that part of the mountain is off of my paper. So I'm going to start here. I'm just going to go up just a little bit again, slightly wavy, and then go back down. Now I'm going to start another mountain. Now this second one is going to be a bit taller, then come back down a little bit. And then I'm going to go up a little bit and wavy line back down the other side of the mountain and then go up and I'm off my paper. The other part of the mountain is off the edge of my paper and that's perfectly fine. That's what I want. All right. Now, when we get this done, we actually want to, the next step is to draw the two sides of the mountain. We want to make it look like light is going to be shining from this side, which means the back side of the mountain would be in shadow, except we're not just going to color in shadow. I got to have a different idea for that. Okay. But we want to separate the face of the mountain from the back of the mountain. So what that starts is, if you go to the peak of each mountain that you have, now this one doesn't have a peak, it's off the paper, so I'm going to show you what to do for here. I'm going to start at the peak, and I'm actually just going to make it look like there's some sort of crack in the mountain, like somebody split it with an axe. And I'm just going to take right here, and I'm not going to draw a straight line down, I'm going to draw at a slight angle, but again, a little wavy line, but then I'm going to stop. I am not going to hit the ground line. I do not want to hit the horizon line. I want to stop up just a little bit higher. So here I go. Like that. And you can bend it just a little bit more if you wish. Not too much though. Here's the next one. And then finally, this last one, I'm going to pretend like the peak is over here. The line is there off my paper, but then it, it comes back into view right there. So here's the face of my mountain. That's what the sun is, the light is reflecting off of, and this side is in shadow. Now what I want to do is I want to make it look like each mountain is its own separate item. So what I need to do is I am going to take the lines, bottom of the lines that I just drew here, and I'm going to draw it up because I don't know where it's connected. I'm going to draw a slightly wavy line up till it meets right where I started. That'll be okay. Now this one will be a little bit more obvious. From here, slightly wavy line. It actually now looks like this mountain continues here and this one is back behind it. And now we want to do it for the next one. There's one. And this one I'm going to have be flat and then all of a sudden go up just a little bit more. So here is the shadow of the mountain over here. And here is the face of the mountain, the front of it that's facing the light is right there. So you can see actually now it actually looks like this mountain is slightly in front of this one, this one is slightly in front of that one, and this this one is slightly in front of the other one as well. Okay? Now the next part is the front is not just going to be one solid color. We want to make it look like there might be a, a, a lump of rock or something covering the mountain as well. So I'm going to be taking what is like a jelly bean shape and making it slightly wavy. Now you don't want to go too big with this, but I'm going to put it right on the faces of the mountain, the front of it right here. So not too big. And as you can see, that's smaller than my thumbnail. I want to keep it kind of small. I'm going to put another one here. Now this shape that I'm creating for this is called an organic shape. It's one I'm making up as I'm going. Now I have an idea in my head about what I would like it to look like, but I'm just going to do my best in drawing it. So I'm thinking of like a jelly bean but making the edges of the jelly bean a little bit more wavy. Then over here, since this is a tall mountain, I'm going to put a little smaller one over there. And then for this one, I'm going to put a, another small little wavy jelly bean shape there. I'm going to leave that empty and that empty as well. And guess what, friends? Your drawing with a normal pencil is all finished. Now your job is to take a very sharp um, black colored pencil or a very fine Sharpie or something that's black that comes to a very, very, very fine point. So stay away from crayon for this. Colored pencil works best. Get it to a nice sharpened point. And I'm going to tip this a little bit because it's a little easier. I want to see where my pencil line goes. 
So now what you're gonna do is all over your pencil line that you just drew, you are going to go over this and press down, but stay on your line. So take your time. Some of you are speeding through projects and that is not what you want to have happen, especially with this one. Patience, because these really dark lines are going to pop because a lot of this project, we're actually going to leave white because it's supposed to be a winter landscape. So we want white represented in here a lot. So I'm gonna take my time. I am pressing down quite hard to make this line very black and bold. And that's one line. And you can see the difference between the black line and the standard pencil line that I drew. Now I'm gonna to wanna to carry that throughout my whole project on every line that I drew, even these jelly bean things, these waves, the ground, everything that I drew with pencil gets that, all right? Here is my other finished one that I draw, that I drew that's in that example in the document. Now there's only one thing I want you to do with a regular Sharpie or a black marker, not the fine point Sharpie or the colored pencil, the regular Sharpie that we all know and use or a black marker and that is on the mountain tops, just around the outline of the mountain here, not these lines. We only want these lines on the top of the mountain to be thicker than the rest in the picture. Because I have an idea of what we're gonna put in the sky and this thick black line will shine as an excellent barrier between the mountains and the sky. That's all, that's all you want the regular Sharpie for. This one is officially done. I am going to work on this one till this one is done, but this is part one of the project. Once you get finished with this part right here, please stop and wait. I have an idea of what we want to do here. Those of you who have watercolor paints, we might want to try doing something fun up here. You also could actually watercolor paint without having watercolor paints. You can use marker, and if you draw on something that um, doesn't soak in the marker, you can actually add some water to it and paint with it, which I'll show you at, an, at part two of the project, okay? So this is part one. Get here and stop. But those of you who have watercolor paints, we're gonna be using those for the sky and maybe some other part of the work. So this is what we have for right now. This is part one. Stop at this point, hold on to this one. And I hope that you guys did a really nice job. There's not a lot on this. This one's done, okay? So keep a hold of this. Remember to upload this to Seesaw so I can give you credit for part one. And then I will give you for credit for part two when you finish that part. All right, guys, good luck, have fun. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.